Hello, this is Adam Weinberg with the State Water Resources Control Board, Division of Water Rights. Today I'm here to present to you a tutorial on how to fill out the Scott Parcel Curtailment Certification and Diversion Information Online Response Form. A few disclaimers before I get started. First, if there is no water diversion on your parcels, or if the diversion is less than two acre feet per year, you do not need to fill out this form, though you are welcome to do so. Additionally, this video does not supersede the order or the regulation, and it's not a replacement for reading the regulation yourself, reading the letter that we sent, or for viewing helpful hints and tips on our website. The purpose of this video is just to provide some technical assistance and show you how to fill out the online form. So with that said, let's begin. The first thing you need to do is go to the website where the form will be filled out. That website can be seen at the top of my screen here, and you can copy this either from the letter you received, or you can write it down from the top of my screen right now. Once you get to the same place and see the same things on your screen that you can see on my screen right now, you can begin by clicking the button that says log in here on the lower left hand side of your page. When we click on that, we see login and password or, uh, or reporting identifier. This information was provided on the curtailment order letter that you received. And you would find this number on that form and you would enter that information here. As I'm going to do right now. That is my login ID, and I'm going to put in my password. Once I've added my login and my password, I'm going to click login. If this is the first time that you've logged in to our forms portal, you will first see a page that asks for your email address. If you do not have an email address, that is okay. At that particular screen, you can add any email address, including the Scott Shasta Drought at waterboards.ca.gov email address that you would use if you have questions about the form, about the regulation. Since I've already filled out a form, it takes me straight to the water user dashboard. This dashboard provides all of the different forms that are available to me. The form that we'll be filling out in this tutorial is the Scott Parcel Curtailment Certification and Diversion Information form. This is the form that you'll be filling out if you received the order imposing water right curtailment and reporting requirements in the Scott River watershed for water rights associated with the parcels listed in attachment A. If you received a different order, or an additional order, you may be required to fill out the Scott Shaster Curtailment Certification Form, which you can see right here. On this page, you'll see two buttons. One is the survey and one is summary. Survey is the button you would click if you want to fill out your form. And summary will provide you with uh, all the information that you entered into the form but it will not allow you to actually fill out the information in that form from that button. So since we're going to fill out the Scott Parcel Curtailment Certification and Diversion Information Form, we're going to start there, find the associated survey button, and click that now. This brings us to the introduction. This has some important information in it that you will want to read before you begin, out, begin filling out your form. For the sake of brevity, I'm not going to read this to you now. Once you have finished reading this information, you'll click Next to go on to the next page of your form. This is the contact information page. This information here is necessary so we can contact you if we have any questions about your, the information that you entered into your form. On this page, you may be able to see through this video, there's little red stars next to name and best contact information. This indicates that you must fill out information here or else when you try to click next to get to the next page, you'll get an error message 
and you won't be able to get to the next page. So I've entered my name, and my email address. You can also add a phone number. And again, if you don't have an email address at this stage, that's okay. You can just prov provide a phone number here. Then I'll press next. One thing I'd like you to notice is there's both a previous button and a next button. The previous button would allow you to get back to the previous page, and next would allow you to advance to the next page. Anytime you press next or previous, it will save the information that you've entered onto this page of the form. If you close your browser for some reason, without clicking previous or next, information that you entered onto this form may not be saved. So now we'll press next. This brings us to the type of water right and use information page. Here you'll see that there are three different checkboxes that we need to select any that apply to our situation. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to fill out this form assuming that I have a well on a parcel that was listed on Appendix A of the order that I received. So I'll select this first box. It says under this first box that if I have a well, I need to fill out additional pages of the form, including information regarding groundwater diversion and use, and the curtailment certification form on the following pages. The other two boxes do not apply to you to me, so I'll leave them unchecked, but you should read these to make sure whether they do or do not apply to you. Having selected the box here for myself, I'm going to click next to go to the next page. This brings us to the curtailment certification page. Here we have to select which of the following boxes here applies to our situation? We've got three options. Either we can certify that all diversion has ceased in accordance with the curtailment order, or there's the next checkbox where we say that we're continuing to divert under one of the exceptions to the regulation, we'll provide the associated certification. That's filling out one of the other forms, or we can certify that we're continuing to divert under different right that's not subject to cur curtailment. If we select this option, we then have to fill out information in this box here to specify which water rights we're continuing to divert under. But you can leave this blank if you don't pick option three. So I am going to say that I'm continuing to divert water for minimum health and safety needs. And then I'll scroll down. This next question here says, if you are continuing to divert under one of the exceptions to the regulation, you need to tell us which of the exceptions you're continuing to divert under. Since I'm continuing to divert water for minimum human health and safety needs, I'm going to select this box. This last question here says, if there's any alternate sources of water being used on your parcels, please say so here. If you do not have any alternate sources of water, leave that blank and then click next. This brings us to the information regarding groundwater diversion and use page. This is where we provide information about how and where and from groundwater diversion and use occurs. If you do not divert or use groundwater, please skip this page. Now, the first two questions here ask if I distribute water that I pump to others, and whether I sell this water. In the sake of my example, I'm going to say that I pump water from my well for my own use. So I'm checking no to both questions. If on the other hand, you are selling water and distributing it to others, please click yes. And then you can provide more information about the water that you sell at this box, at the bottom of the page, which asks for a description of groundwater use. In this box here, it asks you to please list the parcels they used groundwater on in 2021. And this question asks you to list the parcels that you pumped groundwater in 2021. So this one asks you where you use groundwater, and this one is where you pumped groundwater. And this last one, as I mentioned before, asks you to provide a description of your groundwater use, such as I have pumped groundwater on my parcel for my family's domestic uses. Having provided all this information, you would click Next. 
This brings us to the information regarding surface water use and diversion. If you are not using or diverting surface water, you can skip this page. And as I said before, you scroll down to the bottom and click Next. So if we are diverting surface water to be used on our parcels, this is where we provide information about this diversion and use. So if you have the right to divert water through an adjudicated water right, or permitted, licensed, or registered water right, or riparian spring, you, you would select the appropriate box and so explain our selections in the box below. So here you'll see various adjudications in the Scott River Basin, and if those are appropriate for you, you would select those boxes. Here's the box for permitted or registered water rights. Here's the one for riparian right, and here's one for other. And for any of the selections that you made on this page, you would want to provide information regarding the options selected above. And in each of these paragraphs, they'll request specific information about that type of water. Having provided all that information, we'll click Next. This brings us to the Attachments page. If you don't have any attachments, you can skip this page and click Next. However, if you have any information that you want to provide to us that might be pertinent, such as information about your water right in an adjudication or about the location of your groundwater well or your parcels, you would want to come over here, click Choose Files to select the file on your computer, and then click this button that says Upload. And having done so, please describe in this box what documents you've attached, and then click Next. This brings you to the submission page. Here, once again, we have required boxes, including the name of the person signing the document and the relationship to the legal landowner. I am the legal landowner, so I'm saying self. But if you are a relative or, say, a business associate, you would want to put that information here. And then click this box, which says I certify under penalty of perjury that all information entered into this form is true and correct to the best of my knowledge. If you get here and then you realize that there's information that you need to change in the form, as I said before, you can click this previous button to get to one of those previous screens. And then you can click the next buttons to get back to the screen. And then when you are satisfied with the information in your form, you can click Finish and Submit. And this takes you to the summary screen. Here you'll see all the information that you entered into the form. And at the very bottom, you see this button that says Show as PDF. And if you want to save a copy of this form for your files, you click on this button and save a copy of this form as a PDF on your computer. And then you can say return to dashboard, which brings you back to this water user dashboard where you can select a different form. Or if you want to edit your form, having already provided answers, you can do so. That is one thing I want to make sure I just reiterate is that if you do submit a form, but realize there's information that you need to change, you can still go back and change that form to correct those answers. So you would then just click the survey button next to your form, change your information, and then make sure to get to that final screen where you can resubmit. If you don't click resubmit or submit, then we may not get those changes that you provided to your form. That's the end of this tutorial. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have additional questions about the forms or the regulation, you can please feel free to contact us either by the Scott Shasta Drought at waterboards.ca.gov email address or by the Drought phone line. Thank you very much and have a good day.